Banners of Ruin is a roguelike deck builder. It's a genre that saw a big spike in popularity following Slay the Spire, and Banners of Ruin pulls a lot of core ideas and mechanics from that game while shifting enough to make it feel different. The biggest part of the game's identity, aside from its anthropomorphic aesthetics, is how it focuses on trying to build up a team of units instead of just one single character, like Slay the Spire does. Each run of Banners of Ruin starts with two characters from six different races. Each animal race provides different skills and focuses on different gimmicks. The mouse benefits from multi-hit attacks and can build up critical hit stacks. The bear is a wall and can remove debuffs from itself. The weasel focuses mostly on damage over time effects like poison or bleed. The hare makes use of movement skills to shift around allies and enemies. The wolf is an all-rounder that can fill many roles. And the beaver is a builder and supporter. The player and computer each have a front and back rank that can hold six party members total, three on each rank. There doesn't seem to be much of a difference between the ranks though, other than the front rank getting attacked more often. Characters wielding bows can be up front and those with melee weapons like knives or swords can comfortably work from the back without any hindrance. Some skills will only benefit certain ranks or only activate when played from them, but that's about the extent of the rank system. The player only starts off with the mouse and bear races at first, but it's rather easy to unlock the others and start mixing and matching until they find something that feels right. A single run in Banners of Ruin can take about two hours or so, and being rewarded with a new character every time or at least seeing the game's EXP meter only inches from the next unlock gives enough incentive to keep going. Even after unlocking all of the races, there's still more to do in the form of unlockable talents and passive skills. Talents are character-specific cards that often have very strong effects tied to them. Talents are chosen at random from a set of three every other level up, and the talent pool is big enough that the player isn't guaranteed to see the same spread of talents between each run. Although the game does offer a few events and encounters to shift talents around if something goes wrong. Completing a run of the game also leads to new events and choices popping up in following runs, which keeps the slow pace of the game interesting. Speaking of pace, harder encounters in Banners of Ruin can last up to 15 or 20 minutes, and these are regular encounters, not things like boss battles. The majority of the game's runtime comes from thinking out how best to divvy up offensive and defensive cards, checking enemies' intended targets, and trying to calculate out when to use certain racial skills to your team's advantage. I imagine a big part of this also came from the fact I was playing on the Switch instead of PC, where I think a mouse cursor would probably give you a lot more speed. The game's tone is dark and gritty, and I really like a lot of the writing on specific event triggers. I think the dev team has done a wonderful job building the game's fantasy world through the little vignettes in each layer of the city. You're not really sure what this group you're controlling's ultimate goal is, but you can piece an idea or two together from everything that happens in your run. This is all kind of dropped in the final encounter though, which has a huge dialogue dump that gives all of the story in one long vomit. The game's difficulty flip-flops around from just right to intentionally unfair. Most of the latter feeling happens during the start of a run or right near the end. I have had the game throw full six-man squads against my starting two with no guaranteed way of surviving. And a couple of bosses near the end output so much damage and healing that abusing only the cheapest of tactics can guarantee victory against them. I've cleared the game two times since it left early access, and both of those clears were thanks to abusing the mechanics of a few particular cards in a way that strips out the actual fun and unique parts of the party. While there is a piece of me that really enjoys destroying the game and melting high HP units in one or two hits, another piece of me is frustrated that a lot of my run's late game success gets determined by whether or not I get one specific card that makes everything jokingly easy. If I don't end up with that specific card, it's pretty much guaranteed I'll get wiped at one of the final encounters. Maybe I'm not building my characters and decks properly, but I never found a particular build that felt right when I reached the end. I guess that's just the nature of these kinds of single player deck building games. It's an aspect of it that I'm not the biggest fan of though. One big non-gameplay issue I've had with Banners of Ruin has been navigating its interface. The game is split between the left analog stick and the right analog stick. The left controls selecting units and navigating everything, and the right stick is used to pick cards. While it doesn't happen often, sometimes the game will freak out after a complex series of cards and just lose one of the sticks for lack of a better term. This can be fixed by using the touchpad, but that's a solution to a problem that shouldn't exist. There's also an issue with selecting equipment sometimes that makes the cursor completely invisible. Once again, this can just be fixed by using the touchscreen, but it's kind of a frustrating issue. It doesn't bother me too much though, these things happen so rarely, but I'd feel remiss to not mention them. 
Regardless, I've definitely enjoyed my time with Banners of Ruin, and if it sounds at all interesting to you, I'd suggest you grab it. The longer paced fights and encounters are fun, and the overall tone and feel of the game meshes well with its visuals, but it's definitely one you'll want to have a good few hours open for if you intend to finish a run.